Welcome everyone to another episode of Alex Exploring. Today, I am in the middle of nowhere, but not really. We are in Madison County, Ohio, which is just west of Columbus and Franklin County. There's only three Ohio historical markers here, so we will be uh, hitting them all up here uh, in this uh, mini episode. So let's get started here at our very first historical marker. All right, so the very first one that we're here at is the W. Pearl King Prairie Savannah. But you can get a nice view of the landscape here of Madison County. Truly one of the flattest counties that I've been to here in Ohio. Definitely the closest flat county here to Columbus. But the W. Pearl King Prairie Savannah is mostly undisturbed remnant of the once expansive Darby Plains prairies. Prior to European settlement, more than two centuries ago, the Darby Plains covered an area of more than 380 square miles west of Columbus. These prairies were an eastward extension of the Great Plains prairie that Ohio State professor Edgar Tranzo termed the Prairie Peninsula in 1935. The W. Pearl King Prairie Savannah is a 20-acre vestige of a once large and varied habitat of native tall grasses, prairie, and oak groves. The prairie contains burr oaks, one of the one of Ohio's largest stands of prairie drop seed grass, and several other native prairie plants. Named for a former landowner, William Pearl King, who lived from 1891 to 1960, the site has been owned and managed by Columbus and Franklin County Metro Park since 2006. So then 10 years later, they added this historical marker. You can see some beautiful large trees here. I'm going to guess this is a, uh, a burr oak. But literally, nobody else around us. You know, sometimes we go to these sort of historical markers like at OSU where, I mean, people were on every side of us the entire time. Um, you can only hear birds out here and airplanes. The uh, backside is the same, so let's take a picture for prosperity and make our way to the first and second Ohio historical markers here in Madison County, Ohio. Alright, so we're not at the next Ohio historical marker, but there's a couple things I wanted to stop and see uh, along the way. We're in West Jefferson in Madison County now, and uh, there's this awesome mural here in the uh, uptown area of West Jefferson. So we're going to get a quick picture of that, and then there's one thing I did not expect to find today. I'll walk on over there and show you that because I find it really interesting. So let's uh, take a picture and uh, get going. So this uh, second thing here is uh, a uh, let these uh, car cars cross. But you don't see these very often. No, it's not this little library. No, it's not this church.
We've got a Ronald McDonald here sitting on this bench. Just find this really unique. You don't see this very often anywhere. So it's at someone's house, so we're not going to spend much time here. But just wanted to capture this for y'all. All right, we are now at our second Ohio historical marker after that quick little detour. It's another cemetery here in central Ohio. And this one is the Hampton Cemetery. See with the H right there. But we have this historical marker here, so we'll go and read this. New Hampton and Ludlow's Road. This is historical marker 249, placed in 2003. On September 8th, 1803, the year that Ohio became a state, the associate judges of Franklin County ordered that a road be constructed, quote, leading from the public square in Franklinton to Springfield, Green County, unquote. This road came to be known as the Old State Road, or Ludlow's Road, on this spot in the summer of 1822. That's over 200 years ago, the village of New Hampton was laid out, the road, begin, be, the road being Main Street of the village. New Hampton was the forerunner of West Jefferson. It fell into oblivion eight to nine years later when West Jefferson was developed along the National Road. All that remains of New Hampton is the cemetery and this part of the road. So I'm thinking it is this road that they're talking about. Could be this one, but I believe it's this one leading to the cemetery so let's walk back over this way um we'll go into the cemetery and look at some of the stones let's take a picture of the historical marker for prosperity and let's we'll go venture into the uh, historical area of the uh cemetery so there is newer uh plots here pretty recent ones as well but in this front corner is a bunch of historical uh some really old uh grave sites um we have i can just see three here three civil war uh three civil war veterans four just looking off here, one, two, three, four. So this is J.F. Ford from the 40th Ohio Infantry. Colonel Admiral, I want to say, the 26th USCT. Not sure what that means, going to have to look that up. Here's Levi Hahn from the 40th Ohio Infantry. And then another one from the 88th USGT. Not sure what that means. Let's go look over here at some of the others. Cemetery has stones that are pretty in unreadable there's some that are a little 
better, easier to read, like this one that was cut in half. 22 year old. But a lot of these date before the Civil War. Here's one that has fallen. This person died in 1866. Here's someone who died in someone's infant son. It's like it's a family plot. Eighteen sixty three Lieutenant Isaac G. Jones. Lieutenant Isaac G. Jones. Um wonder if he died during battle. So it's last to his, his company happy to die for my country. So it looks like he, Lieutenant Isaac Jones uh, is a reverend. Immigrated to Ohio in 1819, native of New Jersey. He's a lieutenant in the Union Army for in the Civil War. So that's cool um, little thing here. Here's a updated stone here for Sarah Burnham who lived from 1831 to 1882 here's a Wilson plot David Wilson died in 1877 in his 39th year and his wife I don't know the math's not right there but Mary was 70 year old, died at 1858. Some more smaller headstones. But it's, they're kind of all over the place though. Here's another Civil War veteran of the 196th Ohio Infantry. Here's one. Down here, that's fallen over from the 40th Ohio Infantry. So there seems to be a lot of Civil War veterans in this cemetery. A lot of West Jeffersonians in battling in the Civil War. As we know, there's a lot of people that died during the Civil War. A lot of Ohioans. Let's see this tall one. Another Civil War vet. It's really hard to make out. See off in the distance even more Civil War veterans with the stars. They're all over the Hampton Cemetery. This person looks like was in the 40th. Uh, this was a USGT. I want to say that means ground troops. Maybe they're they were part of a federal company. Hatfield Clark died in his in the service of his country, March six, eighteen sixty four, towards the tail end. Of the Civil War. So let's circle back around. See these. Other veterans here. Before we make our way back to the car. Someone from the. 
184th Ohio Infantry here. Let's say his first name is Peter. It's hard to make out his last name. Here's A. Anderson from the 95th Ohio Infantry. J.S. I want to say Riley from the 40th Ohio Infantry. Some of these markers are very hard to make out. Um, we've seen some other cemeteries that have been kept in a better shape, but um, here's Alex Fields from the 100th U.S. G.C.T. or G.T. I'm not sure. So yeah, some really uh, old headstones here dating back 150 years. Um, you know, here in West Jefferson, Ohio, in Madison County, we only have one more uh, Ohio historical marker here left in Madison County. We're going to head there now. All right, so here's our final Ohio historical marker here in Madison County. It's all about Jonathan Alder, the first white settler in Madison County. Seven-year-old Jonathan Alder was captured by a Native American war party in Virginia in 1781 and taken to a Mingo village north of the Mad River in Ohio where he was adopted by an Indian family. He remained with the Indians until after the 1795 Treaty of Greenville ended the Indian Wars in the Ohio country. As white settlers entered the region, Alder frequently served as an interpreter. In 1805, he journeyed to Virginia and was reunited with his original family. He returned to Ohio with his new wife, Mary Blount, and built a cabin on Big Darby Creek. His cabin is now at the Madison County Historical Society Museum in London. Alder is buried in Foster Chapel Cemetery, which is where we are at now. We'll go find his grave. But want to kind of point out there is a decently sized crack in the middle of this historic marker. So maybe the uh, Historical Society would come out and replace this one or whatever. But this is Ohio Historical Marker number 149 here in Madison County. This was the first historical marker placed here. And it was placed in 2002. So compared to some others that we saw that were placed in the mid-60s, early 70s. This is a relatively new one, and, you know, Madison County did not have any other historical markers until 2002. So, let's uh, start in a sprinkle, so let's find Jonathan Alder's grave here. At Foster Chapel Cemetery. So this is a nice little cemetery. It's unlike the ones that we've gone to in previous videos. Um, this one's nice, nice and wooded. And uh, yeah, it's got a nice little uh, path here. I see an alder, so let's head this way. 
likely a um, few different alders here. Hmm. This is H.C. Alder, born in 1845, died in 1915. So not the alder that we're looking for. Look at this site, though. These have been kept very well done. You can read everything on them, which is not always typical. And even the the little lamb on top of this uh, five-month-old grave here. And look, look at the detail on on this one and this one. You don't really see this amount of details on graves and tombstones this old. These are all from the 1800s. And, uh, I mean, they're probably can thank some of the trees from around here for some. Here's the Bidwells. There's a few Bidwells here. And these are large markers. They're 15, 10, 15 feet tall. Nathan Bedwell looks like this is one of the top dogs. This is a whole family though. And this whole, all these plots here, 18, late 1800s mid 1800s they all lived to be rather old for the time Elijah Bidwell seems to be the patriarch of this family here died in 1849 at the age of 60 so that would put him at 1789 birth here's some more six-year-old orin crab here we go here's jonathan alder's grave here First white settler, Madison County, born September 17, 1773. At the age of eight, taken by the Native Americans, returned to his mother in 1805. So that's 24. He was 24 years old whenever he was reunited with his mother. After being taken at the age of eight. They have this nice stone, some laid wreath here. It looks like it's been here since Christmas. Then there's a shot glass there as well. Let's see what the other side says. Not sure if it doesn't look like this is the original one, but um, could be. This could be the originals here. Um, not quite sure though. But this stone here has been placed in honor of Jonathan Alder. So that's going to do us for today here in Madison County. We have hit all three Ohio historical markers here in the county. Um, we'll check out the London Historical uh, Society. Uh, to see Jonathan Alder's log house at some point. Um, but for today, we're going to uh, wrap it up here. Uh, if you enjoyed our video, want to learn more about Ohio, please like, subscribe, share, uh, comment in, in the comment section below. We want to know and uh, hear 
uh, what you have to say here about Madison County and uh, join us for another adventure um, as we uh, uncover Ohio's history here uh, on the ground here in Ohio. So uh, make sure to like and subscribe, like I said. And, uh, you know, that's with that being said, I am out. Make sure to uh, look for history in your backyard because it's just uh, hanging out here in the middle of middle of uh, the farmland. So we'll see you next time. Alex Florin out.